And good evening, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made, and certainly become to rejoice and be glad in it. It's glad to see everybody tonight as we're uh, in for another spirit in life. This is the day that the Lord has made, and certainly um, we're rejoicing and we're glad and glad to see all of you tonight um, as we are uh, in for yet another spirit and life. Thank God for our intercessory prayer team that has paved the way for us tonight in prayer. Um, prayer is important. And as we continue to uh, walk out our faith journey, uh, we know about the importance of prayer. Um, we're excited for this season uh, as we begin in Advent. Haven't been with you in a few weeks, but certainly I know that you've been uh, in good hands and having good conversation. And the praise reports that I've gotten um, lets me know that we have got uh, great help. Uh, pastor's got some great uh, assistance and uh, Reverend Lottie and Reverend Barron and uh, Reverend uh, Riles and then also uh, Reverend Washington. And we thank God as well as Reverend Sellers. Uh, and it is simply because of the help uh, that I can be able to do all that I have for kingdom assignments. And so uh, grateful to God for that. Uh, I know y'all were blessed on Sunday and uh, I'm glad to be back with you tonight. So let everybody know we back and uh be back tonight, and God willing, if the Lord allows, we'll see you again on Sunday, um, that we might be able to celebrate. Um, I need Jesus. I've seen some of y'all have sent me a couple of text messages about little eagles taking their little dive, um, but the hate is real. It's all right. There's still more season left. I'll have more to say about that. I'm glad my son isn't in the house with me right now because um, he's been acting a plum fool ever since Sunday. So y'all pray because he's going to need the Ministry of Kindness, Sister Frazier, because he's going to need somewhere else to live because he keep acting like this. It's going to be a problem. So uh, but if you dish it out, you got to be able to take it. So uh, I take it. But I, I also know how to take it by force. And so um, if you see a stuff on the outside or you see a Facebook post saying, come get the kid, y'all know exactly why and what that's about. Um, we got the, we were forgetting about last week, and now my focus is on the Dallas Cowboys this week. So uh, all y'all Dallas fans know that uh, it's about hate. So, you know, like they said, we're on to the next game right now. So, you know, it doesn't look good for y'all on Sunday, and I'm, I'm just going to pray. So maybe you want to get all your Dallas fans to come join in on the Bible study right now. That's all right. Um, it's pretty cool. It'll be all right. Uh, I'm rejoicing with Sister Julia, though, because my college team is – University of Texas. And so uh, they're going to the final four. So, uh, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, uh, you know, so that's all right. We, we, we all right. We, we're, we're, we're holding on. So I know y'all didn't come talk football. We can talk about that all night long. This is an ESPN. This is spirit and life. So uh, I'm gonna get with y'all right now so that we can get to the word of God and, uh, and be able to get to all of you so we can be able to do the Lord's work uh, tonight. And uh, so that's that. Um, there will be no anger in my voice. You're going to get a good Bible study tonight, and it's going to be uh, in love. Amen. So uh, make sure you inbox all your Dallas people and tell them uh, to get on because they're going to need tonight because tonight's Bible study is centered on hope. So we want to make sure that we can help uh, all our Dallas people uh, to have hope. Amen. So um, we won't be able to do that. So <laughs> let's begin with a word of prayer. Um, you know, I don't want to hear all that, Renette. Don't even talk about all that. Just just do your job. Stay over there. Make sure you co-host and do what you got to do. We're going to pray right now so we can start. All right. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for just the ability to laugh. And thank you for this wonderful church family that you have assigned me to and that I've been blessed to be the pastor of. And God, we ask now that as we get ready for spirit and life, that uh, your spirit, uh, would speak to us and speak through us, God, that we would be able to go and grow in such a time as this. So we thank you and we honor you. Uh, we bless your name tonight. And we ask God that you would get the glory in all that is said and done. It is our prayer tonight uh, in Jesus' name. We pray and we say, amen. I want to begin tonight. We're talking about uh, hope and um, we're going to ask that you would journey with us. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, yeah, we are ready. Good. Thank God. All right. We're going to get ready to begin uh, talking about hope tonight. Uh, and for those of you that know, we are in the season of Advent. And uh, Advent is a, a very important time uh, in the life of the church because 
uh, Advent celebrates uh, the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, but not only does it talk about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which a lot of people uh, focus on, but also it's also about the season of uh, celebrating and honoring uh, and understanding uh, that Christ is going to return. And uh, we know that the Lord has come, but we also know that the Lord is coming back. And because we know that the Lord is coming back, um, we who are in the world and who live in the world uh, have the assignment of carrying out, is particularly in the season of Advent, um, the spirit of hope. Uh, when you look around and you see uh, all that's going on, the economy is quite turbulent. Um, we've got apathy when it comes to church and folks uh, are saying that they're now spiritual, but they're not religious and they're not coming to church the way they used to come to church. Uh, we've got what's going on right now uh, in Israel and Gaza. We got war and the rumors of war. And it's important for us to pay attention uh, for those of us who are of the ethnic persuasion, um, not just to look at what's going on in Gaza, but we've got genocide uh, in Africa, and that doesn't make it uh, into the news. Uh, we've got people who are being tortured and abused. Uh, we've got other people who are being persecuted, Christians who are being persecuted for their faith um, around the world. You look around and you see a political system, particularly here in America, where it seems like capitalism wins. It seems as though that wrong is right. And you ask how long will wrong go? And you start to begin to lose hope when you look around and you see, you know, police brutality in our own community. Or you can look around and those of us who are in the Syracuse community know that uh, we lead the nation in extreme concentrated poverty. And we look around and we see in a couple of our school districts, in our in our in our core schools, in our school districts, where ninety percent, ninety, not 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 nine, but ninety percent of our kids and people are not even reading on grade level, um, and so we've got a lot of things that can discourage us. Um, it's important for us to understand too that in the midst of the world, in the midst of the world being turned to and fro. Um, you know, we always used to use that. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not that cliche guy, but it's important that you hold on to this cliche, but don't make this cliche, make this a part of your character. And a part of your character is understanding who you are and whose you are, right? Who I am and, and who I belong to. And so therefore, even though I am in this world, I must recognize I'm not of this world right? I'm in the world to function. I'm in the world for a season. But the reality is I'm not in this world. I'm, you know, I'm in this world, but, but my world is the kingdom of God. And the Bible tells us that in the end, um, the government shall be upon his shoulders. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And in the middle of idolatry, in the middle of all these things that are going on, people worshiping uh, false gods and idol gods and people just dropping off, it, it, it becomes very easy for you to become manipulated or for you to become discouraged in the faith. It becomes very easy for those of us who are Bible-believing people to say, ooh, you know, where's your God now? It's kind of like, you know, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And when you look at Elijah and the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Baal were going up against Elijah and Elijah was going up against the whole multitude of them. It was hundreds of them. And Elijah was the only one to stand there and says, listen, you know what? Let's have the test. Let's see. Let's see if your God is your God. And let's see if our God, my God is my God. And in the end, we're going to find out. And so sometimes God allows things through his permissive will to demonstrate to the world that he's still God. There's some things that God allows. And sometimes I have a hard time because people want me to make sense of tragedies and make sense of why people die and why good people are taken and this, that, and the third. And we can get in our feelings and it's right around the holidays. Of course, 
everybody's not feeling feeling it because you know you got loved ones that you remember and you know you got a whole bunch of wretched people out there and then you're saying to yourself hey what's going on if god is god why does he take the good people if god is god you know and sometimes you know as a pastor you know you want to tell you know you want to have a conversation with the lord like listen you know you taking some good folk, Glee, Lord. You know, you taking some good folk. Now, if you need a list of folk, uh, I can send you an email with some names and some folk that you can go out there and get in the world who ain't doing no good and they drug dealers and they got this and they got that. But that's not my job, right? My job is to keep and maintain hope in a society when there is, when you can become hopeless, right? You don't need hope, my brothers and sisters, until things look hopeless. Let me say it again. You don't need hope until things look hopeless. And so I want to encourage people today, if your situation is it looks hopeless, if it feels hopeless, if, if you're walking around and you feel like this is going to be the end and I'm going to die like this and all I'm going to have and this like that, your situation looks hopeless, just remember, and you can throw it in the chat, you don't need hope until it looks hopeless. And so I want to begin there tonight uh, as we share uh, in our Bible study on hope. So let's get at it, if you will, tonight. All right. So let's talk about what hope really is, right? When we talk about the word hope, um, and you're in my my gallery here, so I can't really see it all. So let me see how I can do this here. Uh, when we talk about hope, um, you know, hope is defined by uh in scripture, uh, that you'll find that the word hope, and just let me move my gallery here if I can. Um, okay, yep, y'all over here now. All right, so in the scripture, according to the, the Greek and the Hebrew words, hope is an indication of certainty. So when we talk about hope, it's about certainty. And hope in scripture, as many of you already know, means a strong and a confident expectation. So when we are walking around in hope, we're walking around in a strong and a confident expectation. Hope is a, a, a brother, if you will, to trust and trust in a confident expectation. And so when we're walking around talking about, I've got the spirit of hope, right? Um, hope is about having a, a, a spirit of positive, again, and confident expectation. Uh, there are two things that you need to know about hope. Uh, the first thing that you need to understand that hope stresses two things. One is futurity, and the second is invisibility. Futurity and invisibility. Futurity and invisibility. And if you don't know what that means, there it is at the bottom. It simply means that it deals with things that we can't see or haven't received or both, right? So when I'm exercising hope in my life, hope postures me towards the future. Hope doesn't just posture me towards the future, but hope also centers on invisibility, on what I don't see. Come on, somebody, right? And it's going with the cousin of faith, right? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So for me to have hope, I've got to have hope that speaks towards my future state. And it's got to be a future state that I can't see. And when you're in a future state that you can't see, that's when God does his best work. Come on, somebody. When I can't see it, that's when God has ways of performing it. So I don't freak out and become hopeless because I don't see it. I get excited because this is the opportunity for me to bring out my Christian character, which has hope as attached to my character, right? It's not good enough for me to have love and not have hope. It's not good enough for me to do good things and not have hope. Because if you're a walking in faith, we know people who are faithful. We know people who go to church and they have no positive expectation whatsoever. I mean, you know, there are some Christians who are extremely pessimistic, extremely pessimistic, right? You know some people, if you throw the glass in front of them, the glass is always going to be half empty. 
The sun could be shining, but they'll point out the clouds talking about it looks like it's getting ready to rain. It could be a good day. You ever had somebody, you know, you don't you don't want to associate with them because they always bring a but into the conversation. Right. It could be going good, but they'll find but it could be a positive event, but they'll say something about but they always have something to say that really cancels a positive expectation. And you got to be careful because you have to guard your spirit. You have to guard the people that are around you. You have to guard the places that you're in because inevitably what happens is you can become contaminated by people who don't have hope. For those of you that have hope, you got to hold on to it. For those of us that don't have hope, we've got to well it up in our spirit so that way it becomes a part of our everyday expectation. Why are you always so optimistic? Because the Lord tells me to be optimistic. Why do I always have hope? Because I don't hope in people, places, and things. I don't hope in chariots or men. My hope is in God and in him, there is no failure. Come on, somebody. So I got to be able to have hope. Now, let's look at a scripture that can help us, right? Romans chapter number eight, and verse number 24. I'm going to ask uh, somebody tonight to go to Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 24. Uh, when you get there, let me know by saying amen. And if you just let me know by saying amen, um, that would be good. Um, but Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 24. I see Reverend Sellers coming to us all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. So we got to put the long distance. So she's got more frequent flyer miles than everybody on here. So we're going to use her tonight uh, to read to us tonight, uh, Romans chapter number eight and verse number 24. All right. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for all right. And so what the scripture is telling us is, is hope is the saving element in our life, right? It's the saving element in our life. We're saved by hope. Hope that is seen is not hope. In other words, if you see it all the time, that's not hope, right? If it's in front of you and you got to believe it and, and, you, and, 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 you, and you believe just based on what you see, it's not hope, right? It's a positive expectation of what you don't see. For hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what does he have the hope for? What do you have the hope for, right? So here it is. When my situation hits me and your situation hits you and it hits you smack dab in the heart of it, you got to say, this is the time for me to have hope. Why? Because hope, a man sees, what does he hope for, right? There are going to be certain situations that come up in our journey that require us to exercise hope. God tests us on all levels, right? He wants to know where your love is at. He wants to know where our faith is at. And he wants to know where our hope is, right? And hope is based on what I don't see. I got to have a positive expectation about it. All right. I'm talking to folk right now and maybe you got bills and maybe you got debt, right? You got to be able to have a positive expectation. Baby, I'm going to be debt free, right? Maybe I'm not living in the best of things and I've already disqualified myself. I won't have a house. I won't have this. No, you got to see it, right? You got to say, listen, even though your life may be, uh, you're bringing up the rear and your life is unstable, whatever the case may be, you got to be able to say, yes, I've got a hope that this thing is going to even out and everything's going to be all right. It speaks to the future. It speaks to God and it speaks to what I need to have, right? We're not saved by what we see. He says, we're saved by what we don't see, right? When we believe God, and we accept the Lord Jesus into our life. We don't see a man. No, you don't see him. But guess what? You have faith in the unseen. None of us were there when Jesus rose from the dead. But when I make the confession and confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, I believe in the unseen, right? If I can believe in the unseen 
and have what I call saving faith, I could also have living faith and I could also have hope for the future. If the Lord came back three days later, I've got enough faith that he can show up for me when I need him to show up. If God could disappear and for three days and it looks like he's going down, looks like he's dead, looks like nothing's going to happen, but three days later, rise up and every man now has the ability to be saved, I've got enough hope to know that if he did it before, the Lord can do it again and he does it again according according to our hope. So what, what, what was, was our lesson? Our lesson tonight is, Lord, help me to resurrect my hope. All right, let's continue as we look about hope. All right, so here we go. Uh, now, I talked about hope, and I want to talk about hope and faith, right? Um, does my gallery show up on your screen? Do you see it, or do you just see the screen? You just see the screen. All right, praise God. All right, so... Many times we hear people talk about hope and hope and faith, and they're the same thing. No, 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 no. Um, they're separate, but they're closely connected. And somebody who's taking notes, you know, or you want to screenshot this, screenshot this, because now you'll understand a little bit about the difference between faith and hope, right? So the faith is when I have confidence in God and his word. But hope is the patient waiting for future things, right? So, so I've got faith and faith in his word, but the faith has to be matched with the hope, which is patiently waiting for future things. Um, Let me, let me help and stop right here. So I, I stopped screen because I want you to see my face, right? Some of us are missing out on some great God moments because we're not patient. You have to patiently wait for future things, right? Now, now here it is. Um, you know, my biological clock is ticking. By this time, I ought to have this. By this, I ought to have that. I ought to be here by now. I ought to be there right now. And now what happens is you start being like Abraham, where Abraham had a promise, but Abraham didn't first get ahead and give Isaac. Abraham went ahead and got with Hagar and had Ishmael, right? Because Abraham didn't patiently wait. God, I thank you. Here, here we go. Now, I want you to know this here. If Abraham is the father of faith and the father of faith blew it by not patiently waiting, don't you think for a minute that none of us, how matter saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized will blow it in life. Don't act like you always know how to patiently wait on God. No, 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 no. I want to talk to people tonight who can be honest and admit that there have been times that you took matters in your own hands, times that you were God all by yourself, times that you said, listen, God, I know you said it, but I'm going to help you along. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this thing, right? And then we end up getting ourselves in stuff and then ask God to bail us out simply because we didn't learn how to patiently wait. People who have hope have to learn not just to have the positive expectation. That's the part we always talk about, right? Positive expectation. Boom, boom, boom. No, 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 no. Positive expectation has to be met by waiting and patiently waiting. If you are an impatient person, this Bible study is going to get up under your skin. If you are a control freak, this is going to be the one where you don't like Pastor Jaime. Because guess what? You are by controlling and always got to control it and try to manipulate situations so that way it goes in your favor and it goes against the plan of God, you will always end up on the wrong side. You got to ask God, God, give me what I need so that I can patiently wait. I've got to have enough to wait on God. Hello, somebody. He may not come when you want him to come. Come on, somebody. 
but the Lord is always on time. And where the people who are on this Bible study tonight who can say, listen, pastor, the words you are speaking are spirit and life because that's the word of God. But I want you to know that I serve an on time God, that there have been times in my life where I blew it. But come on, you got to also pat yourself on the back because there have been times in your life where you have learned how to patiently wait on God. Didn't mean that you didn't cry. Didn't mean that you weren't, you were, you were uh, uncertain. Didn't mean that your knees weren't knocking. Didn't mean that your head wasn't hurting but you learn how to patiently wait on God to deliver. Hope has to be a person that learns how to patiently wait on God. Don't just have positive expectation and then not wait. Uh-uh, that's not hope. That's crazy. You got to learn how to have the positive expectation, but the positive expectation has to be coupled with patiently waiting on God. That's the beauty of it all. See, when you learn how to wait on God and God comes through, baby, that's gas in your tank. When God has, you patiently waited and you found out that your hope God is taking your hopelessness and turned it around because you've learned how to have hope. That's the blessing from God. So let's learn how to not just have faith in his word. Let's learn how not just how to have positive expectation, but let's learn how to do it the full way. And the full way is learning how to patiently wait. All right. So let's go back and look at hope and faith again, right? Faith, number two, gives life and reason to hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Come on, somebody. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Come on. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. For those of y'all that are writing a note down, write it down and underline faith and underline hope. Come on, somebody. Faith is the substance of things hopeful, right? So I can't have faith without hope. Are you with me? Everybody preaches faith, right? But no, you can't have faith without hope because faith is the substance of things hopeful. Faith means I've had the is the substance, right, of, of me having a positive expectation and also patiently waiting, right? Now, hope number three is not baseless, or is it only fantasy and wishful, wishful thinking? It is not delusional optimism, right? In other words, I'm not just saying I got hope because I have hope. I'm saying I've got hope because I got God. Now, that may not be good English, but that's good preaching. Hello, somebody. Hope. I'm not saying I've got hope. No, I'm saying I've got hope because I've got God. It's, it's not just wishful thinking. It's not just, oh, here you are being so, oh, this, that, third. No, 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 no. The reason I hope is because I got God. And if I've got God in my life, somebody told me in the word, with God, all things are possible to those that believe. So I've got to learn that my hope is not baseless. Stop listening to people who are contaminating your hope. Stop being around people who diminish your hope. Stop getting next to people who do nothing more but assassinate your hope on arrival. As soon as you show up with hope, there's people right there to cancel it out. Hello. And, and, and here it is. You got some people. Let me. Oh, God, I thank you. You got some people that will cancel you out of a positive expectation. And how many of us, you, get, you put your hand up on this one, will cancel you out of patiently waiting. All right, this Bible study. Let's get some Bible. Job had three good friends. Three good friends. And Job started off with positive expectation. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job lost everything in chapter number one. 
And later on, by chapter number 13, his friends are now talking to him and speaking to him. And, and if you read in Job chapter number 13, oh my God, it blesses my life because Job had the audacity to say, uh-uh, y'all been talking. Hold your peace and let me speak mine. He said, let me speak mine because it says in Job chapter number one, uh, chapter number 13, and let's go there real quick. Uh, Job chapter number 13. Let's let's do that. So that maybe, maybe, maybe we'll stop there. Job chapter number 13. Job chapter number 13. Um, and let's read verses 1 through 15. Sellers, I know you got the baby. You, you good? You want me to get somebody else? You got it? I don't know if you're waving me off or waving me on. Oh, give me, I can, I can do it. Just give me one second to flip to it. Come on, by, by this time, you got to know how to multitask, baby. <laughs> you said 13. Mm-hmm. Start, right. start at verse number one. Lo, my eye, my eye hath seen all this. My ear hath heard and understood it. What ye know, the same do I also know. I am not inferior unto you. Watch what he says. He said, listen, my eyes have seen, my ears have heard. He's talking to his friends now. What you know, I know. He said, I'm not inferior to you. He said, listen, stop talking condescending to me. Y'all know people like that? When in the middle of your situation, they want to talk down to you. He said, nah, man, you're not talking down to me based on my, God, I can preach this. You're not talking down to me based on my situation. Hello, you ain't judging me based on where I am right now. I'm not in fear to you just because I'm down right now. You want to judge me just because I'm down right now. You want to speak a word just because I'm in a bad season of my life. You seem to know why I'm in this season like God has forgotten about me or I've sinned or I've done something against God. Even though I'm the most upright man, according to God, you want to tell me that it's something that I've done. This is what he said. And he said, listen, I'm not inferior to you. Stop talking down to me. Stop letting people talk down to you. Keep going. Verse three. Surely I would speak to the almighty God, almighty, and I desire to reason with God. Here it is. He says, I'm not going to reason with you. Hello? When your situation looks hopeless, stop reasoning with people. Learn how to reason with God. That's what the scripture says. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll wash them whiter than snow. Whatever situation you're in, God wants to deal with you. God wants to speak to you. God wants to help you out. God wants to give you understanding. This is Bible. This is spirit and life. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. James chapter number one, it talks about well, how James talks about, listen, if any man lacks any wisdom, ask God. He is not going to beat you up for you asking a question to him. Reason with God. Stop getting your answers from people. Stop getting your answers from these teleprophets on social media who, ain't, who don't know nothing, they ain't got no license, don't have no anointing. They just pricking on your emotions. He said, nah, baby, you got to learn how to get that thing with God because some of y'all is mad because what the prophet told you on YouTube, he said it was your year. Hello? That was for the people that he was talking to over there. That wasn't you. Hello? Some of us, we, we get mad with God because, oh, well, I've been following this. I don't want to go there because, listen, that's why when you got when you got a house and you got a, a, a people who are an authority to speak over your life, you got to understand those are the people that are responsible for speaking into your life. You can't just let any Tom, Dick, Harry, Jane, uh, prophetess this, prophetess that, come and give you a word from the Lord. No, you got to get your word from the people who got vision, who are watching over your souls, because guess what? They're the ones who know what's going on in your life. Hello, that's why I listen. I love T.D. Jakes, but guess what? Some of the stuff that he's talking about, he ain't talking to me. He's talking to the Potter's House, Dallas, Texas. He's talking on West Keys Boulevard to them people down there. 
Sometimes he's talking in a universal, but sometimes that's a word for the house, right? Sometimes we just happen to be, we, we just happen to dial in and it just happens to speak to our situation. But sometimes them words ain't for us. Sometimes there's a word for you. You got to learn how to make sure how to reason with God and get God's word and get God's word for your life in the God kind of way. And so he said, listen, I'm not going to reason with y'all. I desire to reason with God. All right, go ahead. Verse number four. This is where it starts getting juicy, baby. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are at all physicians of no value. Come on, somebody. This is what Job tells his friends. Y'all, you've been forging these lies on my life. Like, you know who I am, and you know which way I'm going. He said, you are all forgers of lies. Hello, physicians of no value. Hello, you the reverend doctor and you the reverend doctor don't know nothing. Come on. You got biblical knowledge, but you ain't got no spiritual knowledge about what's going on right here. Hello, you, you can tell me what the book reads, but you can't read the next chapter that's getting ready to happen in my life. Come on, somebody. Hello, you are a physician of no value. That's why you got to stop allowing people who don't, have the authority to speak into your life, to speak into your life. Too many of y'all have got physicians of no value. Hello, somebody. They got credentials, but they don't have the anointing. Come on, somebody. You, you got the title, but you ain't got the power. Hello. You got the title, but you don't have discernment. God, I thank you. You, you, these guys have the title. They're physicians of no value, but they cannot discern what God is doing because here's what he says. In Jeremiah 29, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts about you. I know what's going on in your life. Thoughts not of evil, but to bring you to, come on somebody, an expected end, right? That means I've got a hope for your life. I've got a positive expectation for your life. So why am I reasoning with people who don't know what God is doing? Why are you spending time losing energy, getting frustrated, answering phone calls, taking uh, to social media for people to speak into your life and they don't even know what God has got planned for you. Hello? Physicians of no value. Okay, keep reading. Right. Oh, that ye would also got to hold your peace and it should be your wisdom. See, this is nice biblical talk. What he's trying to tell me, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Don't you say a word. Hello. Because God's got a word for my life. Hold your peace, right? Keep going. Hear now my reasoning and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will ye speak wickedly for God? and talk deceitfully for him? Hello, somebody. He said, listen, you you, you, you talking for God now? You speaking what God has planned for me now? You let me know what God is going to do? Are you, are you speaking wickedly for God? Are you talking deceitfully for him? In other words, you lying on God. Hello? Well, the Lord let me tell you this. The Lord, let, let come on, God. I thank you. Come, I'm about to get up out my seat. Look, the Lord, y'all, y'all ain't never, y'all ain't never had nobody tell you that, right? All of a sudden, you know, service is over. And here comes somebody trying to speak into your ear. You know, the Lord done told me this. Now, the Lord just gave you a word of God from the man of God, the woman of God, from the prophet of God, whatever the case may be. And now, all of a sudden, here comes somebody on the backside because they feel like they're emotionally empowered to now give you a word from the Lord that's going to be on. Like, like that's the dessert to the entree that you just received. The devil is a liar. No, 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 no. Stop lying. On God. I said this years ago, and it, the body of Christ is being killed by lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is killing, you know, we got a serious problem with lead poisoning here in Syracuse already, right? But but lead poisoning is killing the body of Christ. Oh, the Lord led me to do this. The Lord is leading me to tell you this. The Lord is leading me to tell you that. The Lord is leading me to tell No, 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 no. The Lord ain't lead you. You that's lead poisoning. 
You've been led deceitfully to speak into somebody that God didn't give you no authority to speak into. And you, I got ready to say something, crazy, are listening to it. And then you become conflicted because you listen to what somebody else said over here, what God has said over here, and now you're trying to weigh which is which. No, right? There are people who speak deceitfully for God. Hello? I watch YouTube some days and I cringe. I watch social media and I cringe because they ain't speaking Bible. Hello? Just because they put the scripture together don't mean it's Bible. It doesn't mean what it says. They take scripture out of context, out of wrong interpretation, and they got you doing something, right? I'll give you an example. I don't have time to go here. Y'all ask me another Bible study, and I'll make it happen, right? Y'all ever read the scripture for the vision as for an appointed time? Write the vision and make it plain, right? Write the vision has nothing to do with you writing on your vision board. I know I lost half my church right here. Don't press leave me, baby. We talking spirit and life. It has nothing to do with writing your vision on a vision board. We're going to write the vision. We're going to make it plain. We're going to have this. Now, I ain't saying that you can have no vision board meeting, but don't use that as the scripture to say that that's what it is. That's not it. That's talk about something totally, totally different. Hello? All right, let me let me let me get off that. Come keep keep going, keep going. Let, let's 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 go. Uh verse number eight. Will ye accept his person? Will ye contend for God? Keep going. Is it, is it good that he should search you out? Or as one man mocketh another, do ye so mock him? He will surely reprove you if ye do secretly accept persons. Hello, he listen, he gonna he gonna get you. He gonna get you when you start accepting these people who ain't speaking right. He said, I'm I'm gonna reprove you. All right, go ahead. Uh shall not his excellency make you afraid and his dread fall upon you? Your remembrances are like unto ashes, your body to bodies of clay. Hold your peace, let me alone, that I may speak, and let come on me what will. Oh, my God. Do you hear what this man said? Job is a bad man, Jemma. He told them brothers just like this, shut up and leave me alone. Come on. They, they ain't have that translation yet. That's the New Revised Standard Version, Darren Hyman interpretation. Shut up. Leave me alone alone so I can speak and let whatever's going to happen to me happen to me. Come on, somebody. That's hope. When you can tell somebody, I know my situation looks bad and I know it looks like I've got nothing right now. And I know it looks like I've lost everything. And I know it looks like I'm not in God's favor right now. And I know it looks like I'm being dropped down right now to nothing, but I need you to shut up. Leave me alone and let me speak on what I will because you're judging me right now. You're judging me by how you see me. And what you don't even understand is for the 10 y'all is going to find your shout. Job was going down, down, down in the presence of people. And as he was going down, down, down in the presence of people, everybody thought that Job was going down. But the truth was Job wasn't going down. He was just being dropped. And the Lord was dropping him down to miracle status. See, sometimes God's got to let your life drop so that you can go down to miracle status. So when everybody else sees it in the end, that they know what a miracle looks like. You got to be willing sometimes to allow your life to go to certain places. It doesn't look good. Doesn't look favorable. Looks like it's going down. Looks like it's not going in the right direction. And everybody got a whole lot to say. Oh yeah, child, I know it's because of this. Oh, well, I know it's because of that. I know it's because of that. No, no, no. Sometimes God allows things to happen so that things can go down because the truth of the matter is 
That's what the gospel is all about. You got to go down for three days before you come up and rise above everything. Don't you judge me by how you going down. You get ready for my come up. And as a matter of fact, my comeback is going to be greater than my setback if you just hold on and let the Lord do what he's going to do. Hold on a minute. Shut up and leave me alone. That's what he said. All right. Go ahead. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in mine hand? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Come on, somebody. Job had some real peculiar ways. He had hope when the rest of them jokers was hopeless. He said, shut up, leave me alone, and let me walk in my hope. Let me rock in my hope. I'm hopeless right now. It looks hopeless right now, but I'm going to maintain my own ways before him. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help you because God has got you in a season where he's trying to tell you, stay to who you are. Stay to who I've made you to be. Stay even though it looks like stuff is crumbling, you just patiently wait and you keep the hope and you maintain your ways. I know everybody's saying what you should do, what you could do, and what you ought to do. But the fact of the matter is you do what God has told you to do. You hold on the way that God has told you to hold on. You stand still and let the Lord fight your battles and see if God won't come through. I know he may not come when you want him to come, but I got about 30 people on here today that said the Lord is always on time. You got to learn how to maintain your own ways because the truth of the matter is they're maintaining their ways. They're staying hopeless. They're staying critical. They're staying pessimistic. You stay optimistic. You stay faithful. You stay trusting God and you watch what God's going to do. Hope. Though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Come on, I wish I had somebody in here. It, what, what he's saying is, it's killing me, but I'm still trusting him. Come on, somebody. Where you are, it's killing you, but you got to trust him. I'm here to talk to somebody tonight who, yeah, it's killing you right now in this season, but you got to still keep your hope and your trust. Yeah, it's not what you want it to be. Oh, but you got the you got the trust. I know somebody prophesied 2023 was going to be this, and 2023 been hell. But guess what? You hold on, you trust them, you maintain your ways, and watch what happens. Because if you quit in chapter number 13, you don't get chapter number 42. God, I thank you. Here's what happens. Uh, this is good preaching right here. Jo we're in chapter 13. Job's friends wanted him to file chapter 13. They wanted him to file bankruptcy in the middle of his situation. He said, I ain't filing bankruptcy. What I'm doing is I'm trusting in God because my father is rich in houses and land. I ain't filing chapter number 13. You don't file chapter 13 when you got a father that's rich in houses and land. You don't quit on your situation when you know that you got a God who will pull you up and get you out. You don't give up because you know when you look back over your life and you begin to think about what the Lord has done, you say, I've come too far to turn back right now. I hope in God. That's the hope. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You got to have trust in God, and you got to trust God even though it's killing you. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to people tonight who it's killing you to be in this situation. It's killing you with your finances. It's killing you with the job. It's killing you because you're in between and you can see yourself on the other side. You're in the tunnel. You can see a little light and there's no, or you're in the tunnel and you don't see any light. And it's been killing you because you've been riding for a while and there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Come on, somebody. Uh -uh, baby, if you came to Bible study tonight, hopeless, baby, you came to the wrong night. You, you came to the wrong night. It's too much hope on this. Hello. Hello. Can you, th there's a song, um, 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 Chandler Moore sings, um, and, and, and he sings it with Tasha Cobbs and he says, 
Can you imagine with all the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what the Lord can do with all the hope in the room? Do you imagine what we could do if we all put our hope in God, can you imagine what we get? What, what can happen when you learn how to put the hope in God? Can you imagine, even though it's killing you, that you say, "Yo, I'm joining with the Hope Gang," right? Right? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and this is what you have to have. hope. And I and I and I use this too. Is you you in order to have hope, you got to also deal with hope, right? Um, in other words, in order to have hope, you got to have hope. Put that in, in, in the chat. In order to have hope, you got to have hope. Hello. Um, here, here it is, right? In order to have hope, you have to have H-O-P-E, right? Here's, here's the hope. Y'all, listen, y'all ain't got to pay me for this one. This one's coming right at you. Here it is. Hope, H, healing. O, over. P, past. E, experiences. In order for me to have hope, I've got to have healing over past experiences. And too many times our hope is being canceled because you don't have healing over your past experiences. Your past is still in your present. Come on. Your, and the reason why your past is in your present, and now guess what? Your past is contaminating your future. Because hope requires me to have a look towards the future. But I can't have a good look towards the future when my past has always been jacked up and I haven't been healed over my past. Hello? That's why you angry? Hello? That's why you always uh, uh, pessimistic? That's why nobody want to rock with you? Hello? Yeah, they'll have a conversation with you, but they're getting off the phone real quick. Because guess what? You don't have no hope, but you can't have hope until you have hope. You got to have healing over your past experiences. And too many of us are carrying trauma and drama in seasons and stages of our life when God wants to bless us. Hello? Your past is behind you for a reason. Come on, somebody. Hello? When I get on the highway, and I get on the highway, and I get on the car, and I get in my car, and I and I, and I I hit that left lane, and I hit that left lane, and I start passing cars, it's for an intention. I want to get past them so I can get to where I need to go. And after I pass them, guess what? I just look in the mirror to just make sure I've cleared them. But I ain't looking in the mirror looking for them to catch up to me. I'm trying to get to the next car and keep going and get to my destination without a speeding ticket. You'll catch that on the ride home. Some of y'all, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Lord, take my foot. No, Jesus don't need to take Jesus don't need to take your wheel to take the wheel. He need to take the pedal from some of us. Hello. Repentance, that's the next Bible study. You can repent on that later. Hello. But that's what we do, right? So I, I'm trying to get ahead. And Job is saying, listen, I'm trusting God. I'm hoping in God, right? Psalm 42 says, hope thou in God, right? I, I don't, I don't want to go too much further because if I do, then that's it. So I, I'm going to bank out here. But, but here's... Here's where I'm at, right? This is the season for us to employ hope, even though when it's hopeless. This is the season when we got to have hope, and we got to have hope to have hope. So as we're closing out this year, yeah, maybe you need to write down somewhere, what are some of these past experiences that I need to get back, get by, or what are these past experiences? And I'm not negating that it didn't happen. I'm not negating that it didn't hurt you. 
I'm not negating that the person may not have been wrong, may have been done you wrong. I'm not negating that, yeah, there may be some things that you may have even done to yourself. I'm not, I'm not negating any of that. But but there's a reason why it's a past experience. Because he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, and like David said, morning by morning, new mercies I see. You can't see the mercies of new morning. If you still back there thinking about what happened last night, last month, last year, God help me so that I can have hope and let me have hope so that I can have hope in Jesus name. Amen. Um, the right. prayer and the passion that we ought to have is Lord, uh, increase my hope. Right. And then as you're asking God to increase your hope, you also have to ask God to um, give you hope, which is the healing over the past uh, experiences. And as you do that, um, just remember as we close tonight that hope is centered on a couple of things. Number one, a positive expectation, and that's a positive expectation that speaks towards the future. And then secondly, it requires us to patiently wait. So I want to antagonize you for those of you that are not good and impatient and control freaks. I want to encourage you in this season. No, baby, let go and let God trust God. Patiently wait. Your time is coming. God did not forget about you. You are still on God's radar. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knows what he has for you. You don't have to be running around throwing a thousand business cards out there trying to do all that. No, 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 no. He's going to make the way for you. All you got to do is patiently wait. And so positive expectation, patiently wait. All right, let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to study your word. We thank you, God, for um, this study. And God, we do have hope. Uh, we have that positive expectation. And God, for those of us who may not have the positive expectation, speak to our spirits so that we can turn our negative into positive, that we can take off the garment of gloom and put on the garment of praise. God, help us tonight because God, some of us, we know what you have in store for us, but Lord, we want to do it ourselves. Help us, God, to patiently wait. God, we know that we've got people in our ear. We got people in our all around us, people trying to tell us what to do and how to do it. But God, let us maintain our way if our way is your way. If our way is not your way, God, help us to make our way your way. And when our way becomes your way, God, we're going to trust you. We're going to patiently wait and we're going to have positive expectation. Bless the absent portion. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are afflicted and infirm. We pray, God, for those who may be unsteady in this moment, who are even on this spirit in life. We pray, God, that you'll begin to work a work in their life. So we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're about to do. And we bless you tonight. We bless you. We bless you. We praise you. And we thank you. And we thank you because we don't have an empty hope. Our hope is not baseless. Our hope is not in the wind. Our hope is in you. The one who made the heaven and the earth is the one who will make the way for us. We trust you. We believe you. We love you. And we praise you. It's our prayer tonight, we pray in Jesus' name.